Hey fellas, this is Colin and you're watching Magic Strawberry. The game design and overall specs of 1998's Resident Evil 2 are quite primitive by today's standards, and Capcom thought so too. Which is why they saw fit to trade in their pre-rendered backgrounds and fixed camera angles for a more technically palatable experience this time around. Capcom made the ambitious and no doubt tedious decision to completely remake Resident Evil 2 from the ground up. Instead of walking down brightly lit halls and corridors, you're instead walking in pitch black areas while making do with a flashlight. Instead of character models consisting of a few polygons, we now have beautifully realized 3D models capped off with motion capture performances. The pre-rendered backgrounds have been done away with in favor of brilliantly lit 3D settings, and this time we can actually control the camera. All of this done, by the way, by using the RE engine they developed in-house when making Resident Evil 7. Capcom didn't leave a stone unturned while developing this remake, which resulted in a highly satisfying and terrifying experience. Just like in the original game, we have the choice to play as two protagonists, Leon S. Kennedy or Claire Redfield. I chose to play as Leon, so this review will be based off of that experience. Anyways, Leon was heading to the fictional Raccoon City to start his first day as a deputy in their police department. His first day at work would turn out to be quite difficult, however, seeing that Raccoon City has been overrun by zombies. The Resident Evil 2 remake doesn't play much differently than other games in the series aside from a couple. You're placed in multiple hub levels where you continually solve puzzles, and use 5 million different kinds of keys to open 5 million different kinds of doors. Along the way, you gotta deal with some zombies here and there, which become quite the burden very quickly if you're not careful. Capcom deserves massive praise for just how terrifying this remake is. Shadows, dynamic contrasting, and sound is used to their fullest extent to shape this frightening experience. Wandering down a black hallway lit only by my flashlight with the distant sound of a zombie making zombie noises made me tense in all of the right ways. And speaking of the zombies themselves, they looked fantastic. I'd even go so far as to say they're the best looking zombies in the game ever, even if they reuse character models every now and then. The one character that truly rounded out this experience was Mr. X, or the tyrant, or whatever his name is. From the first moment you see him, his daunting presence makes you dart in the opposite direction, leading him to stalk you all over the map. He comes at a time when you feel like you're comfortable with the map, and there's minimal conflict only for him to arrive and ruin everything. The combat is solid, too. It's not too action-oriented considering the game's survival horror approach, but it still feels satisfying. All in all, this is about as solid a survival horror experience as you can get. Capcom did a marvelous job remaking this 21-year-old game from the ground up. It's an improvement in every possible way imaginable, and it sets the precedent for how every Resident Evil game should be made from now on. Everything from the morbid settings, the way shadows are used, the desperate combat, the puzzles, the character models, it's all nearly perfect. Which is why I give Resident Evil 2 a 9 out of 10. Thanks for watching Magic Strawberry. Feel free to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Twitter at ZTP Goofing Off. Bye!